Hello and hope everybody's doing well. This is Rick in 8SDR. And this video, we're going to go over software comparisons of Thetis and Expert Electronics EESDR version 3. These software applications will pertain mainly to Anons uh, and the Hermes for the Thetis and Expert Electronics. Um, SDR radios, the Sun SDR 2DX, the MB1, um, the Pro, um, and their separate little receivers that they have, uh, the Cabrero series, and um, and those. Remember that it's a software defined radio. The S meaning software. The software is going to play a large role into what you can and cannot do um, with the hardware. Yes, there's gonna be limitations in the hardware as well, um, but the software is ultimately gonna be the biggest factor into what you can and cannot do with that particular um, SDR radio. So that said, um, this is another fly by the seat of my pants uh, non-scripted video as always. I just don't think that uh, scripting things out, you know, yeah, it might have its advantages, but yeah, you know, we always uh, have a screw up here and there that is good for a chuckle. And I just think that doing things by the seat of your pants here um, is a little more passionate, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, this video, when I go over to each one of the individual software applications, those applications are not going to have audio. I may not even power them. Well, some of the options I may have to power on so that you can see them. But, um, and it's going to be a quick video. I'm not going to point out every single um, facet of each one of the software applications, but kind of go over probably more of the useful features um, and configurations within those software applications. And if they require a third party application or in the case of expert electronics, say um, an added piece of software for like rig control or um, doing VAC, um, things like that. So I'm gonna touch on a few things um, and uh, just kind of point out what I think is more of the kind of highlighted areas that um, may be more advantageous with uh, one of these software applications versus the other. And again, um, some of this will be based on hardware avail availability within the radio that you're going to use. But like I said in the beginning, software is your software defined radio. So what you can and cannot do in the software is gonna play a large role into what happens with the hardware itself. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's uh, go over to the main screen here. And first we're gonna start with Thetis. This is Thetis. This is the version for the Hermes Light 2. Um, this is a specific version of Thetis that's uh, got, it's a little bit different layout um, versus the regular Thetis version but uh, overall, the features are pretty much the same. Just things are in a little bit different places and there's some other options within this because of the hardware. So first thing we'll go over is um, one of the newest features that's in the, at least in the beta five version. I'm pretty sure this is out or upcoming in the a non version for Thetis um, for the G2s, the 7000s, the 8000s, um, etc. You can run remote with the Thetis software now. Um, it does have IP based uh, WAN, wide area network ability, uh, uh, availability. It doesn't require a um, authentication server. There's some real benefits to that. Um, 
we all know about Flex uh, having issues once in a while where their authentication server is down. And if you can't authenticate, you're not going to have a remote connection. Um, Expert does something very similar to that where they have an authentication server as well. Um, it's kind of a convoluted, cumbersome thing you have to to do, and we'll touch on that when we get there over on the um, V3 version. There is some extra software you've got to configure to do that. The Thetis version, um, you pretty much just point it to your um, IP address and your port number and load that stuff up in your remote app application, your remote software, and you're pretty much up and running um, as long as that port and that IP address is available um, on your network and it's not blocked, you're you're good to go. This is new, so it is somewhat still in testing phases, but overall it's working pretty damn well uh, for most people that have tried it. So that stuff would be... Um, based on your IP addresses and stuff, okay? The, let's go over, let's go over audio. Um, VAC, um, there's no required third party or, well, there's required third party for your virtual audio cabling. So you could use um, the actual true um, VAC or say VB audio, um, and you have that for both your <clears throat> receiver one, receiver two, and Thetis um, for transmit and receive. That's a little bit different than it is an expert where, um, yeah, the receive is not so much a big deal, but when you go to transmit, it's kind of, again, convoluted where you've got to run an extended program application that they've developed um, via rig sync um, to actually get that to work. And it, there's a little more latency involved in that method because you're converting audio for one VAC, which is going to have just a slight bit of latency to begin with because it's a virtual, it's a virtual audio cable. So there's, there's sampling that's going on and resampling and then conversions um that take place on experts side of things um particularly in v3 this wasn't so much an uh, an issue in v2 because it actually had vac and it worked very similar to the way this does but version three of their software the new software um there's a application you need to run called rig sync and rig sync takes the virtual audio cabling um and then transfers that to TCI for TCI audio. So now you've got two sets of conversions going on. You got the virtual audio cable conversion going on and the conversion from VAC to TCI into the radio. So there's there's an added delay there. Um, and this is very well, you can see this very well by using um, say the third party application um, VAR AC. VAR AC is extremely picky on the delay times between transmit audio, receive audio. It's, it's, it's very fast switching. And if there's a slight delay there, um, things can get really kind of screwed up where you don't connect or stay connected to the, the other party that you're working or, or, or trying to work. Um, you'll, you'll get timeouts on it, not connecting to that, that individual. Uh, you'll see it trying back and forth and it'll keep trying and keep trying and keep trying and finally it'll fail. Usually that's an issue with um, delay in the time between transmit receive switching back and forth plus the audio going back and forth as well. Okay. So the less conversions you got going on, the faster that's going to happen. That's a very big benefit of doing it this way. Um, where you're only doing this conversion here instead of having to do the conversion twice. And again, that's available for RX1 and RX2. Um, one of the bigger things I think um, in 
a lot of the Thetis applications, well, in all the Thetis applications, especially under um, DSP now, the for audio is, and I don't, I'm not running this because I run an outboard rack and I'm, I'm using my compression set in that application instead of here but it works very similarly where i have a multi-band compressor in my rack um for audio but within thetis you also have a multi-band compressor it's um continuous frequency compression cfc um it's not just a standard you know uh typical of like your yazu icom kimwood where you've got the option to turn compression on and off um in, in adjusting, you know, how much compression is actually there. But within CFC, continuous frequency compression, you can vary the compression by individual frequencies. So your lows, your mids, your highs, they're all adjustable in here, okay? Um, that's a huge, huge advantage rather than just turning compression on and off. You can, you can get this to sound absolutely fantastic um, just in the software application itself. Without using any outboard rack if you if you don't have it um the other thing that's um uh, nice here is um and i'm going to be skipping around back and forth here com ports com ports um the ability to use cat control for um various applications you've got four cat control options in here plus your separate ptt if you want to break that out you know uh, to key the radio that's built into Thetis. It's not, again, I don't have to use the, the, um, the breakout application, like an expert electronics, uh, rig sync to do my cat control. And again, there's a delay because now you're converting your cats. Um, you know, if it's, um, a standard cat or if it's a virtual cat, um, you know, using, um, like the VSP manager, virtual, um, virtual serial ports. With this, it's direct into the software. With Expert Electronics, you're, again, converting your virtual cat back over to TCI, and there's, again, an added delay. It's not significant, but it's enough that in some applications, it can make or break that application from working correctly. Again, a good example of that is VAR AC. Um, that, that application, again, like I said before, is very picky about timing. The less conversions you got going on, the faster that is, the less latency, the better off you are. So you've got the ability to do that. Um, within Thetis itself. And while we're on that, let me see if I can remember where this is at, CW. Um, you can also do your CW um, with uh, with CAT control as well, okay? So like one gears, um, you know, that, abil that, ab a <laughs> that ability is built into Thetis, where again, with Expert Electronics, and I'll show you this when I get over there, you have to run the rig sync um, to do this. So again, you've got a, another slight little delay. Not that the delay is very big, but it is there, okay? You've got more options with your AGC sloping than you do in um, Expert Electronics where it's more fixed. Um, you've got your leveler functions for transmit in your ALCs. Speaking of transmit profiles, um, let me turn this on. Bring that screen back up. Oops. Turn my sound down here so we don't get that in the background. Um, yeah, I've got this. I got it locked out for I was trying to figure out why this was grayed out, but it's locked out. Hold on, let's uh, let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna lock this back out in a minute. In expert electronics, I've I've said many times with this um, that it's really odd the way you have to set up your profiles and then recall your profiles. Um, it's it's cumbersome. Okay, a lot of the guys 
like me, um, will run multiple different profiles. Um, I'm down to two. I have an 8K profile and a 4K profile, and I narrow the bandwidth up or down depending on whatever whatever I want to do at the time, okay, um, for transmit. But this is easy because I can just, I can save them each individually, name them, um, apply all my gain settings individually to these things, and then recall them on the fly. I can recall them here. Um, I can also recall them down here and the transmit profile expert. This is really screwed up. And you're gonna have to see this when I get over there, you can, you can still recall your profiles, but you have to save them. And there's no way to know which profile you are really on because it doesn't name those. I've mentioned several times in the software that you should, they should have a little box there at least that shows you the name of the profile that you've selected to make, you know, which would make that much easier. Um, to know which profile you're you're on, and if you wanted to change certain things, which which profile without screwing up the wrong profile, you know, you got a profile that you like, and expert, and you make changes to it and you save it. Um, it'd be nice to know what the hell name that actually is. <laughs> um, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Let's see, um, voice squelch. So in Thetis, you have an option of, whoops, if you right click, nope, sorry, it's left click, left click, you've got your squelch features and you've got voice squelch. Voice squelch is pretty neat because it will um, allow just the voice to come through without much of the background noise audio, um, you know, some of the hissing and stuff like that that's, that's in the audio as well. It works pretty well. You've got uh, two levels of noise blankers in Thetis, uh, noise blanker one, noise blanker two. Again, these functions you've got more control over as well um, in your in the settings here. Okay. Um, noise reduction. Noise reduction is a big one for Thetis. Noise reduction in Thetis works extremely well, especially noise reduction too. Um, you've got um, your gain settings, again, your leaks, um, your delays, your taps. Um, you know, if it's pre-AGC, post-AGCs, um, what method it's getting it, if it's linear, logging, or, or gamma. Um, there's a bunch of functionality you can do in here. I wouldn't screw around with NR2 because right out of the box, NR2 is just fantastic. Um, and you can look back on that on, in a previous video um, that I did showing um, the comparisons of the Hermes Light uh, running Themis, running Themis, running Thetis versus the Sun SDR2 DX running version three of their software. There's a big difference in noise reduction between the two radios. Um, and again, if a signal's down in the noise, um, noise reduction two works very, very well. And to go along with that, you know, you have the, the old saying, you can't work them if you can't hear them. So, you know, a lot of the, uh, I've took some flack from a lot of the expert guys um, over on one of the Facebook groups. I'm not going to dive into that again, but you know, that's, that's a big plus with Thetis and Anons and the Hermes light is noise reduction too. It's just, it's, you have to sit in front of a radio or watch the comparison to see the difference. And there is a big difference between the two of them. Um, metering, like I said, I'm going to be skipping around and all over this thing. Okay. Multimeters. So, um, multimeters would be like my meters that I've got over here on the right side. Um, the multi, uh, power compression, uh, voltage amperage meter power out and SWR. And then I have another separate breakout, uh, cross meter, um, SWR with, um, the power scale here and you can adjust the scale with this too. So you can calibrate the scale or set the scale to whatever you're going to use. Again, the Hermes light is like a, a five, six watt, seven watt tops radio. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, so I've got my power scale set to 10 watts um, on the cross meter. So basically, you set up your, you add a container and you can set up separate meters for um, RX1 and RX2. Um, and I'm not going to screw around with these, but you've got, uh, you know, average signals, signal strength text, um, your ADCs, your automatic gain controls, um, estimated, um, you know, mic EQ levelers. This stuff is very, very handy in making sure that especially on the mic stuff. Um, you've got these drop downs up here as well for your mic level, your leveler, your leveler gain, your CFC, your CFC compression, your all overall compression. Um, having the ability to watch these and this scaling is accurate um, is a huge plus in Thetis versus expert electronics and there's been several times that this topic has come up you can look back on their form where the mic leveling it doesn't really match what's going on there um it's it, it, the scaling is not right the readout on the metering that they have isn't isn't correct it's off um and you only have the mic uh metering you know you, you don't you don't see a leveler gain. You don't see your compression gain. You don't see an ALC. Um, and all those play a big role ultimately in to the overall uh, sound quality of transmitted audio of overdriving or underdriving things. Um, especially point with the, um, the ALCs, you want to see those hit zero here pretty often uh, if you're going to run pure signal um, that's available on the non product, most of the non products, some of the early ones, it's not, and the Hermes Light too. Um, you know, that's that's a big thing for cutting down IMD. That option is not available on the hardware platform of Expert, or is it even available currently in their software? Now they claim that they're going to add that, but that's a whole other topic. Just like the full duplex thing over there, um, you can't have one without the other. I'm just going to leave it at that. The um, diversity. Now, diversity does not work with the Hermes Light 2. It is a single ADAC, um, like all of Experts products. However, in Thetis, um, with the Anon products um, that run dual ADCs, you have the availability to do diversity reception. Again, a very good thing for cutting down noises and, and finding weak signals that are buried, you know, by... Uh, noise around you that you, you can't hear that thing um, or that signal and you use diversity to kind of skew the antenna reception so to speak um, and you can rotate your phasing between the two antennas and, and have that signal pop out of the noise really handy now I think there's a way to do it with the Hermes light too but you have to run two Hermes lights and clock them together with um, uh, say like a GPS um, I, I, I kind of remember seeing something about that in an article. I think expert tried to do something like that. Um, as far as I know, nobody's ever gotten that to work. Uh, built in CWX. So you have a built in screen for, um, you know, keyboard, um, CW. I think expert version two used to have that. I don't think that's in version three. Um, oh, speaking of CW, we have CW lower, we have CW upper. This topic's come up quite a bit um, with very avid CW, CWs, <laughs> CW operators. Um, the ability to flip, you know, CW upper, CW reverse, if you want to call it, um, and then straight CW, where experts cw i think is standard cw i think it's cw upper i don't think it's lower i don't think it's cw reverse it's just standard cw so that again is not only a hardware well it's not a limitation of hardware it's a limitation in their software okay it's nice to be able to switch these back and forth if you need to um spotting this is um this is a big one spotting and thetis um, 
just like what you used to have in version two of expert electronic software, you have the ability to add your uh, spotting servers. Okay. You just type in here, whatever, you know, the, the name of the server is the IP address or in the port number um, or the name in the port number and you click on it and you're, you know, you're ready to go. Um, and then you can filter out. Um, we've got this turned off. Let me turn this on. You can filter out if I only want to see spots from North, uh, from North America spotters in here. If I only want to see spots for phone, if I only want to see spots for digital or CW, that's all built in to Thetis. It's not a third party application that you have to go through the setup and configure. Um, now granted software defined connectors is a fantastic piece of software. Um, and I've used software defined connectors with the Thetis. Um, and it works, it works, it works well for that too. The, the thing is, it's so much handier to have this application built right in directly into your software application where you're not having to load a third party application and configure something else when you can do it right from here. <laughs> so, uh, basically if I just wanted to see spots from North America and I, I'm going to click all these, I just hit connect here. Um, it's telling me that it's, it's connected to that server. It's waiting for the spots now. And in a little while, if there's any spots here, you'll start seeing them show up here and they'll populate across the display as well. Like they used to do in V2 of expert electronic software, which again, for some reason, I don't know why they did this in V3. They removed this ability and this is now to do this, you have to run a third party application for your spotting, be it, you know, um, a logger like log HX, log 4 OM, um, 5M contest, N3FJP. Well, no, N3FJP won't do it. Um, N1MM, sorry. Um, you have to run one of those and then apply the port number over there um, in the software and then export in order to get those spots to show up. Okay. It's a bad time of day to do spotting stuff with anything, really, I think. We can try. Well, there we go. So, if I go over to, let's see, I'm just going to try to get these to show up for you so you can see what they look like, so you can see that they actually show up. Where was this guy? On 20, down in the CW portion. Well, there's one of them, passed it up. So there, you've got your spots, okay? Right up here. Um, and then you can click in here too, and it'll take you right to um, where those are as well. So if you want to click this guy, it's going to take you right to that. Um, you know, if I switch bands from 120, let's, let's find something else here, go to... 17 meters so there it uh you know you can click in here and it'll, it'll take you right over to those just like it does in an expert if you run a third party thing and do your spotting okay so uh, let me disconnect this and let me mute that call real quick i'll call them back in a minute here uh another big feature that's really neat in um, in here. And I'm going to have to, hold on a second. I'm going to actually have to put an antenna on this to do this. Give me one second here. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry about that. Um, beacons. Let's say you want to check propagation. Um, and you want to see what bands are, you know, going to be the most efficient for you right now for propagation wise. This is a huge thing with guys running DX. Um, you know, you have the ability to check beacons right here within the software. Um, let me actually get an, an antenna here. It means we did this. And I'm going to run this on fast. Um, it's more efficient if you run it on slow, but it does take about 15 minutes. And I'm not going to get into doing that right now. So you can do a beacon check. Okay. It's going to go through, it's going to scan the beacons. It's going to tell you up here in this list, um, which ones it's found, what the DBM rating on them is. Um, you know, 
etc. Has it found any yet? It did just turn this on. Am I on the right end? Yeah. Okay. Um, ooh. Let's do this again. Okay. Forgot to check the the fast here. So it should be going through. It should start switch. There we go. Switching bands and looking for the beacons. Uh, you can't do this in Expert X SDR's version three or in version two. So this is another really nice thing that's in Thetis built it right in. And also in um, Thetis, Thetis shares a lot of things similar to Power SDR, particularly Power SDR MRX. Um, Thetis was based off of Power SDR to begin with. So uh, there's a lot of functionalities in Thetis that are also available in Power SDR and Power SDR M MRX. Okay. But, uh, you know, there you go. You know, here's one right here. So it saw that 10 meter one wherever it went to. Um, there we go. So you got your signal reports. Okay. This, this doesn't happen in expert electronics. This is very, very handy for checking propagation. Okay. I'm going to stop this. <clears throat> um, again, running that on slow is, is obviously much more effective. Um, than, than running it. You can also do your, um, your vocab, um, your trackings, um, your maps, show DX spot countries on the map, um, you know, map just the pan adapter, show calls on the pan adapter you're, that you're actually viewing, um, get your beam headings. Speaking of beam headings, if you wanted to use, uh, this would require a third party application. Uh, DD Util, you can set up rotor control with DD Util so that when you click on a, a particular spot, um, it's going to pull the beam headings for that. And, you know, if your rotor supports it, um, rot you know, automatic rotor control, then it's going to automatically change the direction for your antenna. That option, again, not available in Expert Electronics EESDR version 2 or version 3. You got built-in time syncing here. You can do this uh, manually. If you do it manually, um, you have to do, run Thetis in admin mode. Um, you can also use uh, WWV to check, you know, the timing, to, and it'll set it by that. Um, speaking of WWV and calibration, this this is a big one. Um, I got to remember where this is at in, in Thetis, so give me a second here. Um Shoot, I think it's, is it here? Uh, give me a minute here. I got to remember where this is actually at. That's user interface options. Check TCI. You do have TCI and Thetis too, by the way. Um, but it is only for rig control. They have not ported over the audio portion of TCI, but you can't do rig control um with tci and use tci spotting if you wanted to do that you know I've, I've done that with like i said with the software defined connector um and where the hell is this at it's a general calibration yeah okay it's a general calibration <clears throat> to calibrate your radio um you can set your wwv and hit start and it will this will go through and automatically figure out the calibration for you and get you very, very close, if not spot on. An expert's SDR three application. Um, this is a cumbersome nightmare, man. Um, you, you set it up, you do kind of the same thing, but you have to manually enter the numbers and, and figure out if you need to go up or down by the numbers and then apply and then listen and apply and then listen and apply and then listen to get it to, to, to get on frequency. That whole process, if you don't have a really good ear, can take you quite some time. Um, it's, it's, it's a nightmare. This, you know, you, you, whatever WWV frequency you're listening to, you, you put the damn thing on it and you click start and it goes through and, it will find, you know, where it needs to calibrate it at and set it for you and you're done. 
Um, again, both software applications, you do have the ability to run an external reference, uh, the 10 megahertz external reference. Okay. So if you really want to be spot on, I guess there's an option that's available in both of them. Um, oh, while we were on the spotted thing here, um, you can run, um, shortwave spottings, um, to apply spottings to the pan adapter, you know, AM stations, broadcast stations, uh, we fax, things like that. Um, weather fax, those, those will show up on the screen and you can, you know, click on them and tune to them. That if I remember correctly, used to be available in version two of EESDR again, not available in version three. And let's remember that version two is no longer supported by expert electronics too. Okay. Um, just version three. So there'll be no more updates to version two. Uh, let's see. I went over rotor control. Um, oh, double sideband. Uh, Thetis, if you run up, want to run double sideband, again, this option used to be available in expert electronics version two no longer available in version three for the longest time am only had the am mode in version three it didn't have synchronous am it just had am um that was later added in i think the last three i think i think it was beta two or beta three i can't remember um that they added um the synchronous am was one of them um, you know, you've got DRM in here as well. Still, if you want to, if you want to do that, it does require a third party application, external software version two used to have this ability too. I don't remember if version three does, um, of expert. We'll find out in a minute. I don't think it does. I could be wrong about that. There's also this radio astronomy thing. I haven't looked into this. It looks interesting. Um, this would probably be really neat for guys doing uh, EME on six and two meters. Um, you know, if you're running a transverter um, or the Anons on six, <laughs> the Anons, the true Anons will cover six meters. The Hermes Light 2 does not cover six meters. I could still do this with a transverter uh, if I wanted to in two meters and 440 and 12, well, you know, whatever. Um, but this, this looks interesting. I may play around with this at some point. Um, but it's built into the software. Um, notch filtering. Notch filtering in, um, in Thetis. I got to remember where I sold this at too. Um, is it? It's a noise blanker. There's an option in Thetis underneath the notch filtering that, well, here, while I'm on this, you've got availability to set your buffers for your modes. This is also available in Expert Electronics EESDR3. Um, you do have a greater sample rate ability in um, Thetis than you do in Expert Electronics. Um, now, I'm kind of locked at 19, 2000 if I want to run pure signal with the Hermes Light 2, um, but the Anons can go, you know, 38.4 on sample rate. Um, I think that's a lot more than what expert electronics is, is got in their software. And I don't know if that's so much a, a hardware limitation or just something stupid in the software that they're doing. I, I, I can't figure that one out because their ADAC, um, is higher, uh, sample. It's a 16 bit on the sun SDR two where my Hermes lights only a 12 bit, but it will do 19 two without any problem there. Um, and I can do 38.4, but I can't run pure signal then if I, you know, if I choose to do that. 
but it is an option and it does work. I just can't run pure signal then. I, again, I like to run pure signal. I want to have a clean transmitted signal. I don't want to have crap on the upper or lower side, um, or reduce that, you know, as, as much as possible. Expert claimed that they were what up to 37 dBm below on the IMD. I can tell you right now, <laughs> uh, the Hermes light, um, you know, it's 55, maybe more, uh, maybe on some bands closer to 60 or close to it. Um, that's, that's a big difference on DBM guys. It's much, much cleaner with, uh, with Thetis, especially, you know, again, you've got proper metering to set up your, your mic levels, your leveler, your ALC, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you toss pure signal on, on top of that kind of a no brainer. Um, what was I wanting? Uh, the, um, shoot notch filtering. Where the heck was this at? Sorry. This is one thing. Okay. That I will admit not having things scripted out and not remembering where things are. Um, noise reduction. Uh, <laughs> This is going to kill me. ALC. Um, where did I see this? Center. Where did I see this? Where did I see this? Where did I see this? Man. Wheel. All right. While I'm looking for it, there is an option in here and I can't remember where the hell it's at. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time on trying to figure out where this was, but there's an ability to set your notch filter bandwidth, um, automatically where in expert, you have to drag it out. You know, you enable it, you put it where you want to put it. And then you, you know, you drag that, uh, bandwidth out. Um, this with, um, the notch filtering, you can, you can set your, um, your notches to automatically adjust the bandwidth. Um, dang it. I'd like to show you where that was at in here, but I can't remember exactly where it was. Sorry guys, but it does exist. Trust me. It's there. <laughs> um, and is it filters? No. Nope. Your filter settings, kind of filters, control ADCs. Uh, oh well. All right. I'm not going to waste any more time looking for that. It's there somewhere. Uh. uh All right, it's in here somewhere. It's there in Thetis. <laughs> um, let's see a couple more things real quick in Thetis. Um, equalizer. You've got a uh, choice between three band and 10 band. Um, these are somewhat fixed frequency um, on receive. On transmit, you do have the option to change those frequencies. Um, 10 band, you don't get a fancy graphic layout like you do in version three. And you know what? I'm really starting to realize version three of expert is eye candy. Um, you know, it looks nice, but the functionality is not there. The options aren't there and you got to run add on pieces to get functions that are already built into the Thetis. Yeah, sure. It looks nice, but, and I'll take functionality and actual results over eye candy any day. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, I guess eye candy sells radios to a point. Um, audio recorders. That's what the other thing I was going to look at. 
So you've got your wave recorders. Um, again, if this is a breakout piece and um, an expert, and I don't have that loaded up. Um, it's a beta release of something that they're playing around with again. You know, it's not it's not fully implemented yet that I know of. Um, and I'm not following them anymore to stay on top of it, so I don't really give a shit. But um, in Thetis, um, you can add your playlist in here and your quick records. This is all built in. You don't have to do a, a separate um, a, uh, a separate piece of software to do these. So you could you could set up, you know, if you wanted to call CQs and certain contests or whatever, you can have those all pre-recorded in here, blah, 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 and then select and play them as you go. Um, you've got your memories in here as well. Again, that's also a function in expert. So, um, oh, one other thing, linearity. Then again, this is going to fall back to pure signal. So with pure signal, you can actually look and map out your um, amp views or your signals. You want these to cross right here in the middle um, for your best um, reduction in IMDs. This is all, <coughs> um, yeah, this is, I guess I just said eye candy. This, this would probably be eye candy, but um, pure signal is in the and it does work and if your hardware supports it, it's already here. Um, I'm not sure how EE is going to pull this off just yet. They claim they can, but then again, they claim to full duplex, and I've been waiting on that forever too. So, um, and they got to have full duplex in order to get their pure signal thing to work. So, I don't know if that's actually going to really happen. My sneaking suspicion is no, it's not. Um, we'll see. <clears throat> If it does, great. If it doesn't, mm, welcome to more fluff, I guess. All right. So let me get out of here. And I really said I wanted to do this quickly, and I've spent a lot of time on Thetis. I'm sorry. There's just so many more options in Thetis um, to do things. Uh, oh, AGCs. So you've got your, your whole list here instead of just, what is it? In, in, in Expert, you have off- normal and fast um here you have your fixed your customs your longs your slow mediums and fast so you've got a lot more options for agc as well okay and let me turn that back off so i don't screw myself up all right see you thetis let me close you down and let me power on sdr2 and we'll open Experts. While we're waiting for this to load, I think this is, yeah, version f the dot four beta. Um, with the most current software or firmware. And whoop. That's not what I want to do. Where is it at? Yeah. Okay. So I am running the last beta build that they have. Again, um, that's beta five and the Hermes light stuff. I will tell you this. Um, I've only had my Hermes light for about a little over a month. Um, I started off with beta one and we're already at beta five or maybe it was beta two when I started, but we're already at beta five. So, um, there's a big advantage of open source um, where you've got multiple people working on on things. Yeah, there's some downfalls to that too, but overall, you're going to get faster fixes, uh, more features, and more stability quicker, I think, with the open source than you are with the closed source. Um, as far as I know, there's one programmer at Expert. I think there's People have said there's there's a couple programmers, but I I don't know. I I don't know which one is actually true because it's it's hearsay at this point. I never, you know, I've asked in the past, but never got a true answer about it. So, um, I, I, it's hard to say how many there actually really is, or if it is just one. And the other thing that I I asked about early on, like a year and a half or two years ago, 
excuse me, two years ago. I think that their programmer isn't even a licensed amateur radio operator. So, you know, again, a lot of this functionality and how things works, I think comes down to them not actually having an actual ham that sits in front of a radio and uses it, um, you know, fairly often. Um, that's, man, that just, to me, that doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. It just doesn't, doesn't make sense. Anyways, let's, uh, let's get this opened up. So again, this is version three and, um, in order to do your VAC stuff with version three, you've got to, you got to run rig sync. This is, this is stupid. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, so, and this goes back, like I said, over the TCI. So you're doing a conversion of, um, of your sound card, your BACs, um, back over to TCI. So you have latency again, you've got to run this app to do this. Okay. That just doesn't make sense. Um, why can't it be built right into the software? Like it used to be in V2 in version two. Um, so you've got, you know, your rig sync in here, your ability to, you know, again, if the program doesn't support a TCI, your third-party program, be it a logger, um, N1MM um, as an example, or WSJTX, in order to get those to work, you do the conversion from TCI to COM port, and then you also have to do the conversion from TCI audio to VAC audio. Again, there's latency involved here. You're you're converting things more often than you really need to. Okay. Yes. TCI is great. I, I, you know, I will give, I will give kudos to expert for TCI. TCI is fantastic, but there's not enough software out there that supports the full functionality of TCI. So until that actually happens and you have to do this, this conversion of, of for programs to get them to run that don't support it, I don't know, man. I'd rather have this built right into the damn software and be able to select using VAC instead of having to do this conversion because I will tell you, I played hell with VAR AC to get that to work right. And there was lots of emails going back and forth between um, the developer I read and, and the guy for, um, I can't remember his name. I'm sorry, I think it's Carlos, but if I, if I have that wrong, I apologize for, um, VAC itself, or not VAC, but um, uh, shoot, <laughs> VAR, for VAR, sorry, I said VAC, for VARA, um, and I think I did that before and earlier when I was talking about that, but yeah, for VAR chat, for VAR AC, for VARA, um, this delay stuff is going to drive you nuts and cause you big problems. Um, I, I did get it to work, but it was a convoluted way of having to do it. And I, there's a video out there on it. So uh, it's, it's, it's a pain in the ass. It's bullshit. It doesn't need to happen that way. Um, yeah, I'm just going to delete you right now. Um, we mentioned, uh, remote ability. So for expert in order to do remote. Um, with version three, you have to go through an authentication server. And again, it's a separate piece of software. You have to download this um, remote starter app. Okay. And you have to configure this stupid thing. Um, and then it's got to go through, let me open up. You've got to download this. You run this. It's a, it's a command prompt piece of software or command software. It runs in DOS mode. Um, and you got to configure the JSON file for your, um, for your email address to authenticate to and whatever secret is actually your password um, that goes between the brackets and you have to authenticate to the server and you know if the server's down your remote's not going to work um, the other problem with this is right now too again based in Russia is a lot of the emails aren't passing back and forth so um when you go to register your user account for being able to use the remote access thing, um, you may be screwed at this point too, because you might not get a confirmation email um, saying that things were set up. 
there's there's some big issues with email going on back and forth between them where they're being blocked by a lot of a lot of email clients um, or not clients but the actual ISPs itself are blocking them okay I'm not going to get any political thing but that's that's a big big issue if you're wanting to run remote like I said earlier it's also a big issue if you have a problem right now with um, you know doing anything via email with with expert I guess the best thing to do would be to use the form there and hopefully one of them sees it and tries to do something possibly with Skype or some other form of getting getting a hold of you because a lot of their emails just aren't being received or going back out. It's being blocked on both sides. That's that's a that's a big disadvantage right now. Uh Thetis forms and you know, I've gone over there um particularly with Reed for the Hermes light stuff and emailed him or, you know, mentioned, brought him up on a form and mentioned something. And man, I'll tell you what, that guy's right on it. Um, you know, the, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's very different. The response time and overall the basic attitude, um, between what's going on with this closed software of EESDR3 and and Thetis in general, um, you know, it's the open source thing. Like I said, it's got some it's got some advantages there. So, again, in order to run remote, you gotta load that damn starter thing and hope that the server's up and hope that it it can authenticate you and they then do the handoff to back to your radio. Kind of a convoluted pain in the ass. Um, so let's touch on some of the stuff over here in expert real quick. The, all your mic settings are over here, um, for your boost and your preamp and your compressor and uh, compressor. And like I said, you've got very, this is very limited. Okay. You've got a ratio and you got a threshold. You don't have like you do in Thetis with, uh, um, continuous frequency compression where you can vary this per frequency. That's a huge, huge advantage in feet and feet is for compressors. This, this works like your typical analog type radio where, you know, compressors on compressors off and you've got a, a, a gain setting. That's pretty much it. Um, you know, noise cancellation, that stuff's available over in Thetis as well. I didn't touch on that. Um, you know, like your gate and your phase rotator and, and all that stuff. Um, yeah, like I said, this looks nice. This equalizer thing looks nice. Um, and again, I think it's eye candy. Yeah, it, it looks nice and it's functional. And it gives you kind of a basic idea what's what's going on representation-wise. But it's it's eye candy for the most part. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that right? Eight. I can't remember if this is eight band or 10 band. Um, and it's kind of screwed up. So your mic profiles, like I said before, um, you know, case in point, like on Thetis where I was using a 4K and an 8K, it's very easy to switch between those. Look, there's no labeling here. Okay, I've got an export and an import function, okay? Um, I do an export. I want to save this as a 4K. I got to create a... I got to create a directory and I got to remember where I put that directory and I got to call that profile. Okay. It doesn't, and the same on, same on, um, same on bringing them up or, you know, going back to that profile. I got to do the same damn thing. I got to click here to do an import, find that directory, find that profile. Um, and it never tells you what the hell that profile name is. Nowhere in here is there any way to see what that profile name is. You just, you have to go by this stuff and hope that you pick whatever profile that you, the right profile that you wanted to select. Okay. And then saving them, it's the same damn thing. You got to go back through and name them um, or overwrite them, whatever. Um, again, what happens if you click the wrong one and you overwrite it? Um, you know, you're kind of screwed. 
the um, so receive. This is where you would get your line outs for your VAC. Okay. Again, I mentioned that it's only line out. It's not line in. In order to do line in for VAC, you've got to run. Oops, it's already open. See, this is stupid. I got to come down here now. Click on rig sync again. Okay. Um, in order to get line in, you've got to run rig sync and then point it to whatever hell that input is for your audio, uh, be it VAC or, um, you know, an actual audio source, whatever. Um, you know, I gotta, I gotta open this. I gotta name it. Um, yeah, well, this isn't going to work until I got actually turn it on and then you got to set, you know, set your sample rates and all that stuff in here and whatever. Um, it's just stupid, but in order to get it out, you just turn this on and you point it to whatever line out you want, you know, from actually you gotta disable this. It's that stupid too. You gotta disable things in here in order to adjust it where most of that, um, is on the fly in Thetis doesn't have to be disabled. So you got your selection of whatever you want to run for, for line outs in here. And again, for RX one and RX two, um, your wave files, like, you know, these are individuals. It is nice that you can set time limits on them so you can break them up. Yeah, that's that's kind of nice. I'll give them that. Um, we're in Thetis, it's going to be continuous. And the fact that this does convert this to an MP3 file on the fly if it does, re if it does recording it, that is kind of nice too. And we'll give them that as well. Um, so, there's, so your AGC settings are over here on the receive tab. On the RX, excuse me, the RX tab. And you've got some settings over here you can do. Um, get the full screen here, sorry. Um, again, it's much more configurable in Thetis. Same with your transmit profiles. Um, you know, I've got to come down here and select these and the taps and my highs and lows where in Thetis, I can adjust this right on the fly from the front panel if I want to. Um, and select whatever profile, transmit profile I want to use. Again, much more convenient in Thetis. Um, PA functions. This is the calibration thing, okay? So, see, I got to tune to WWV, and then I got to listen there, and I got to look and try to figure out which way my correction needs, my coefficient needs to go. Is it minus or positive and this is trial and error man this this is a freaking pain in the ass um you know and then when i when i figure out where it's got to go um I, it's a trial thing so then i gotta write it you know and apply it and watch and see if it's if i'm moving the right way the first thing you got to do is figure out which way you actually got to move um looking you know once you figure out the direction that you're moving to you are every time you change this you got to click right in order to go to the firmware so it writes that and pulls it to get your correction what kind of bullshit is that it's just man that's just very very convoluted and cumbersome way of doing something that is very very simply done and thetis or power sdr you tune to your whatever frequency you're using for wwv um and you you hit start and it does the auto calibration for you and it is pretty damn if you got a decent um receive signal from wwv the thing's pretty damn accurate okay you can tweak it a little bit more by ear but it'll at least get you in the right direction and very very close to begin with where this like i said uh trial and error right trial and error right trial and error right maybe you'll get there i did get mine it is pretty damn near spot on from looking at things um but it did take me it took me a while to get it there okay that's why i'm not going to screw with this um this radio is is on frequency and it's going to go out the door that way um it's 
it's nice that you can start your, you know, selected third party apps from here. Um, yeah, maybe a convenience thing from a functionality standpoint. It's not really that big of a deal. Oh, one thing I didn't touch on on Cetus, um, the coloring of the spectrum, um, display and the waterfall much more customizable much more details available and viewing on that than there is um with this uh locks scheme here okay granted it's just used to be just one scheme um and they did add the third or the three of them now but um even the you know the peak spectrum thing um this wasn't here and you had just one color thing and in, in your fill level. And, you know, if something went above that and you wanted to hold it, um, that didn't exist. That was a feature that I requested in early on and they did add that. Um, now that I'm pissed off at it, maybe they'll remove it. Who knows? <laughs> uh, no, this on Thetis, this, this peak spectrum thing, You've got multiple colors you can bring up and you can set um, each color a separate DBM. And then not only on top of that, you've got the blob function where you can watch the peaks within that range and actually see what the DBM on the blob, you know, that's displayed in the blob thing that you can set for holding or releasing. Um, I've got mine set for a slow release and five blobs, but um you know, it's just much more detail, especially on the waterfall. Um, there's much more colorization where your your densities are um, and, 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 and Thetis than there is on V3. If you're going to use spotting programs, like I said, it's all third party now. There is no availability in version three anywhere to add a spotting or a cluster. Um, it's all done via third party so be it a logger or sdc client etc n1mm um log hx um you know i'm just naming a few of them um 5m contest uh whatever you have to enable that in not only your logging software um and then tell it what port number to or udp to use but you also have to enable that udp over here um, and add it to the list so that it knows where to pour what, what data to collect. Okay. Just more, more stuff that doesn't need to be there. Um, I think that's going to be it. I, I just, you know, again, this looks nice. You're all powered on. This looks nice. And there, there's, you know, you're added and I'll, you know, I was going to say I'd add another antenna over here, but I don't feel like screwing around with that right now. The, um, you know, you've got your, I've got in mind set up this lighter shade of blue for the peaks and there's a little hold there before they drop off. But in Thetis, um, you know, you've got, let's just go over there real quick. Sorry. Just want to show you the difference. Close this crap down. Oh yeah, and then there's this whole thing about, you know, this is running in the background stuff. You got to go down to your taskbar and kill off rig sync and close expert all the way instead of just being able to close it, you know, up here. <clears throat> Turn this guy back off. Open up the just real quick. I just, I wanted to touch on the customization and I forgot about that. Um, and the detail that you can get in the waterfall. So I am going to power this on real quick and I'm choose 20. I'm not going to turn audio up. Um, but see how you've got your, your different colors here and you know what? Let's use 40. Let me actually go over my 40 meter and oh, I got it disconnected. Hold on.
Sorry, I always disconnect antennas when I'm not really playing much with the radio stuff, especially in the summertime here. Um, actually, it looks like 20 was better. Let's go back to 20. All right. So you've got your color scales here, okay? And then the blobs, like I'm talking about. So you've got your peaks, you know, you know, there's, there's your peaks and I've got them, I've got them held. Look how much more details available here too. Okay. Your, your density, you know, your reds and your oranges, um, you've got much more detail, not only in the spectrum, but in the waterfall versus V3. Um, and then again, this is under appearance, um, and then in here. So here's your pan adapter, your pan adapter gradient. Okay. And you can, you can customize this to whatever you want, um, color wise, you know, where the colors apply, um, versus DBMs, you know, where that, where that transition takes place or, um, things like that. So a lot more lot more options okay and you can save these and load these um you can save a gradient and you can recall it um you know whatever customizations you want so again just kind of a big plus there i think all right this has gone long enough and i'm got to get the heck out of here and go see some clients so uh, hope everybody has a great day hopefully this helps some in looking at least on the software side of things um, for expert electronics and anons and, Her and the Hermes lights or the Hermes light twos, um, you know, what your choices in software are. Again, um, V3, you've got Linux, Mac, and Windows based applications, which is really nice. Um, Thetis is pretty much Windows based. You can get it to run, I guess, under wine with um, Mac OS and there may be some breakout possibilities in Linux. However, you do have um, HP SDR, SDR console, um, Spark, and um, was it uh, Red, Red Pita and um, a few other things. So there's, there is, they're both multi-platformed. Um, if you don't want to run Thetis or you don't like Thetis, whatever, you can run, like I said, Power SDR MRX, which would still give you a peer signal. Um, SDR console, SDR console doesn't give you peer signal, but it's another application. So there is, there are more software choices that you can use with uh, the Anons and the Hermes lights versus Expert Electronics. Expert, Expert Electronics, you are locked to their application period. So that's kind of another thing you might want to look at. Um, what's going to happen <clears throat> down the road if, um, you know, they stop updating software. I don't see that happening with Thetis because it's open source. Um, there's always going to be somebody that's going to, you know, be skilled enough to, to take that on and, and change things or update things, uh, add new features, et cetera, et cetera. Where in a closed source environment, if, expert goes belly up or the programmer um, decides he's had enough and he's not going to write anymore. Um, you know, what, what, what happens then you're again, like I said, in the very beginning of this, of this, your, um, your SDR radio, the S is software and the software that you use is one of the biggest factors into how that radio will operate and the availability of functions. If it's not in the software, um, you know, you're kind of screwed. Okay. So hopefully this helps some people out of making a decision or at least pointing them in the right directions to look and give them more ideas to do some more research. Definitely do your research. Um, just don't go by what somebody recommends um you know for a while i was pretty hot and heavy pushing the sun stuff you know i really thought that they were going to take off um and things looked that way in the beginning but tables have turned and i don't see much going on there i don't see 
I don't see them updating software like they were. Yeah, I know there's a war going on there. I get that. Okay. Um, but I think there was some stuff said that I looking more deeply into this and more deeply into what I've been able to find, um, you know, component wise and breakdown wise, diagram wise, um, you know, block, block diagram wise. I think there's been a lot of smoke blown, um, by them over a couple features that, um, for me were fairly important. Okay. And I think come December, um, we're going to find out if, uh, if they actually pull it off or if my gut feeling's right. So again, I wish them luck. You know, I, I like to see them do that because competition is a good thing, but right now, um, I can't recommend them in good, in good faith in good moral. Um, I just think that I, 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 my gut feeling is they've lied about a lot of shit. Okay. All right. Have a, have a great day. I'm out of here and, uh, take care.